Okay. I'd like to call the meeting to order, uh, but before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to clarify that the Planning Com Commission is a recommending body to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. Decisions made on rezoning and variances request tonight will be forwarded to the commissioners for final action on March 19th, 2024. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, please see Ms. Taylor to obtain a request to speak for them. Any request with public hearing will have a minimum of 10 minutes per side for the presentation of opinions, data, and evidence by proponents or opponents of a request. Applicant will be allowed to speak first and any member of the public may speak after. Either side may cede their time during the hearing if they suit is to expire. And the pledge by Mr. Van Meter. Lord, thank you. all commissioners present did I get an approval for the minutes of the previous meeting chairman make a motion that we approve the minutes last meeting I second it. all in favor did I get a motion for the approval of tonight's agenda Butler. There, sir. This is our, these are two massage operators' licenses. Uh, first one is Megan Williams, DBA Massage by Meg, located at 4434 Columbia Road, Suite 204. This is for on premise and mobile massage services. She meets all the requirements of the ordinance. That recommends approval. Are, are you going to take both of them at once? Is that what you're planning to do? I mean, you can. Let's do both of them okay. at once. Next one is Jennifer Soto, DBA Jennifer Soto Massage Therapy. 2504 Dan Street, Augusta, Georgia is mobile massage services only. Again, she is in Augusta. We're licensing her to do work in Columbia County as mobile massage only. That includes both mobile massage operator licenses. Questions? Motion? All in favor? Motion passed. Valvoline. Yes, sir. This is an architectural review for the property at 428 Lewiston Road. The zoning is C2 General Commercial, and it's for a Valvoline oil change facility, and it's to comply with the rezoning condition. Here is the property opposite the Kroger on Lewiston Road. Location is C2. And it's the parcel that's next to AutoZone. The applicants have submitted the site plan, which is under review um, at currently. And these are the proposed elevations. The one on the uh, bottom there is facing Lewiston Road. And the building will be in brick with a metal, metal roof and glazed overhead doors. Here are the other elevations. Uh, rendering of the, the building, so it's primarily brick, and it's got earth tone colors. And here's an example of one that they've done in a different location. Um, this one in uh, on Lewiston Road, that will be have a, a dark bronze metal roof on it. The next slide should be the wishes, and staff is recommending approval. Any questions? Could I have a motion? I make... I make a motion to approve the architectural review for the Valvoline at, at 428 Lewiston Road. Second. All in favor? Pass. Montgomery? Yes, sir. This is a concept plan for Amada Village located off Old Evans Road. Uh, currently split zoned a uh, townhouse residential and R3, although we are just dealing with development on the townhouse residential portion of the property. 
Uh, this shows the location of the site on kind of the west side of Old Evans Road near the intersection with Riverwatch Parkway. And again, a large portion of the site is already zoned uh, TR, townhouse residential. Uh, it's been zoned that way since 2001. We are developing under that existing zoning. Uh, the existing conditions show quite a bit of topography on this site, as well as some existing stormwater pipes uh, that will be removed during construction of the project. And the concept plan is for the development of 60 townhouse units on this property. Uh, you can see they're accessed uh, by an expansion of the private road network with access to Panacea Lane. Uh, it's a pretty simple kind of bisected loop road, um, makes for some you know, fa fairly neat, easy blocks, very simple layout. Um, the, the grading and some of the construction details on this project will need some, some further working out before they submit construction plans, uh, but that's not required to be complete at this time. So for the, the concept, we're looking at kind of the access, which is off of the private road. Um, all the new roads will be private, and the overall uh, layout, and said, simple kind of block pattern, um, and meets all of the, the zoning code requirements. And staff is recommending approval. Questions? Okay, could I get a motion? Chairman, I make a motion to approve the conceptual plan for Amana Village off Old Evans Road. All in favor? Motion passes. Cedar Vale. Yes, sir. This is a preliminary plat for Cedarvale off Laurel Drive in the Bartram Trail subdivision. Uh, this is the location of the site, uh, just east of William Few Parkway and north of Patriots Park. And this preliminary plat includes a total of 44 single-family lots. Uh, several of these lots are grouped in these kind of group quadplex groups of four. Uh, they have shared driveway easements uh, for those groups of four lots, and then the remainder of the lots are kind of traditional front-loading single-family lots. Uh, the minimum lot size is 6,598 square feet, with an average lot size of 8,457 square feet. Uh, there is a 50-foot buffer along the south and the west property lines, and sidewalks and street trees are provided in this section, uh, along with the dog park there in the southwest corner, and connections to the existing Greenway Trail. Staff is recommending approval of the preliminary plat. Questions? I have a motion. Chairman, I uh, recommend approval for Cedarvale. Second. I second it. All in favor? Carries. Island Lakes, Miss Montgomery. I mean, Bird Farm Estates. Yes, sir. This is the final plat for Bird Farm Estates off Louisville Road. So this shows the location of the property on the west side of Louisville Road, uh, north of I-20. And the final plat is for 15 single-family residential lots uh, with a minimum lot size of 43,904 square feet and an average lot size of 62,987 square feet. Uh, this does meet the minimum requirements of the R1 zoning district, and the required setbacks are 65 feet from the center line of the road and 10 feet from the side property lines and 10 feet off the buffer along the rear property lines. Uh, just under four and a half acres of open space is provided in this development, including the 100-foot buffer with the berm uh, that's been installed on Louisville Road per the zoning conditions. This shows the existing site, including that berm. And staff is recommending approval. Questions? I have a recommendation, please. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Bird Farm State so please. Second. All in favor? Highland Lakes. Yes, sir. This is the final plat for Section 2 of Highland Lakes off William Few Parkway. Uh, this shows the location of the section uh, south of William Few, uh, adjacent to uh, Magnolia Valley. And this section includes 57 single-family residential lots with a minimum lot size of 10,012 square feet and an average lot size of 11,310 square feet. Uh, this does comply with the R2 zoning district. Front setbacks are 55 feet from the center line of the roads, and the side and rear setbacks are 10 feet in accordance with that R2 zoning. And this shows the existing site. And staff is recommending approval. Questions? 
have a motion. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Highland Lake Section 2 off Williamson. Second. Favor. Carries. Yes, sir. This is a request for a rezoning of a portion of the property at 4080 Gordon Highway from RA Residential Agricultural to S1 Special uh, for the sales of farm gates and livestock equipment. This shows the location of the property on the south side of Gordon Highway, just east of the city limits of Harlem. And it is currently zoned residential agricultural, as are the majority of the surrounding properties. There are a couple commercial businesses just to the west uh, that are zoned C2. This shows the area of the site, a uh, very typical kind of large lot residential and agricultural property. And the applicant's request for the rezoning is to have kind of a sales center for livestock equipment and farm gates and, and other um, items. Uh, this shows the intended use of the property uh, with a portable building to be used as the office and then display area for the gates, um, barrels, feeders, et cetera, uh, on the front portion of the property in front of the pond. Uh, there is also a proposal to add the sale of um, propane to the site, and that's shown there near the, the tree line in the middle of the property. Uh, the applicant has already done quite a bit of work on the site towards this end. Uh, per the applicant, uh, he's been selling uh, items from this property for about 10 years, uh, mostly to auction, so kind of the expansion to selling more in person and from this site is the, the change in the business that has triggered this request. Uh, we do have obviously some, some concerns with that. It has been operating um, without appropriate licensing. Uh, there's also quite a bit that would need to be done from a site and a building standpoint to get this compliant with county code requirements. Uh, so that is gonna include submittal of an engineered site plan as well as building permits for the, the building that's there, um, as well as uh, septic permitting and addition of a bathroom to, to meet commercial building code requirements. Uh, some of the concerns with this site uh, include the buffering from the adjacent residences. Um, it's very typical when we have commercial or industrial businesses that abut residential property that we do require buffers per county code. Uh, for the S1 zoning district against RA, that is typically a 30-foot buffer, and we are recommending uh, that the applicant be required to install that 30-foot buffer in this location. Uh, that could use the existing fence that you see there and just have the, the landscaping installed behind that fence. Uh, in terms of future development map, um, this property is in the rural character area, but it is also on the Gordon Highway Employment Corridor. Uh, and that employment corridor is intended to allow for uh, employment opportunities in this area uh, without encroaching on uh, adjacent neighborhoods uh, with primary future land uses, including professional offices, light industrial uses, and agricultural uses. Uh, while retail isn't necessarily specifically envisioned on this corridor. Uh, the type of retail use we're dealing with here is very much in support of agricultural uses, uh, which are envisioned in this area, both on the corridor and in the, the larger rural character area. And with this being an S1, uh, it is restricted to just this type of business that is providing this support. So we're, we're not opening this up to, to any other type of retail sales other than the applicant's proposed business. Uh, with the, the amount of outdoor storage on this property, it also could arguably fit the light industrial vision for this corridor. Um, that would be a, an appropriate zoning district for something like this if we were not going S1. Uh, so there is a, an argument for this use being located um, on this property, on this corridor. Uh, however, staff does have several conditions. Uh, so we are recommending approval uh, with conditions that a copy of the recorded plat showing the subdivision of the portion of the property to be zoned S1 be submitted within 90 days, uh, that the engineered site plan prepared by the civil engineer uh, is required. Uh, that's kind of a, a self-evident condition, but just to be very clear that in order for, for this to move forward and, and be compliant with all the county codes, there will be a site plan required. Uh, and then the condition regarding the buffer requirements, so the 30-foot buffers to be provided along the side property lines, uh, meeting the requirements of section 90-139. Uh, with the landscape plan, which would be included with that engineered site plan, typically. Uh, and then a 10-foot landscape strip shall be provided along the Gordon Highway frontage. Again, that's a very typical requirement for a commercial business. 
Uh, we are, in this case, waiving the shrub requirements uh, because the property does sit quite a bit below Gordon Highway. You're really not going to see the shrubs. They're not really going to give you any benefit in this area. Uh, so we are waiving the shrub planting requirement and just requesting that the trees that would normally be required in that landscape strip be installed. And that concludes the staff recommendation. Mayor, uh, the, the Westbrooks, would you like to come forward and speak? On the um, sorry, you gotta state your name. Oh, I'm Ray Westbrooks. Okay, on that plan I submitted, I'm 26 feet off the property line with that fence that she's talking about. So I, I need to have it rezone, I think, so I can put a privacy fence up so I can use that 26 feet of property. Because if I use that 26 feet and my 30 foot buffer, I'm gonna be using 55 feet of my property at 300 foot. That's eating up a lot of real estate that I could be using business so that's what I'm I'm recommending or asking if I can get permission to put a privacy privacy fence around it instead of the 30 foot buffer because I'm already 26 feet off that property line on, on the east on the west side of the property and on the east side of the property I got a 30 foot easement all the way down that um, property line so I'm already 30 foot on the easement uh, I just don't really see where to and, and all this is just temporary for like a year and a half and I'm gonna move it anyway so it'd be easier for me to privacy fence we don't deal with temporary um, yeah I mean buildings the, the application whatever the decision both tonight with the Planning Commission recommendation and sort of commission would be for a permanent situation whether that's Three weeks, three months, or three years, or thirty years. So you know they're considered permanent decisions. Okay, well, um, but that doesn't mean that in a year and a half you don't move. So um, you know, whether that's something that you want to take into consideration with your certainly, I will say that you know with distance, I mean, that's there's an access drive. Your driveway, or shared driveway. No, that's my drive. That's my property. There's no easement on that property. But there's a shared driveway in that 26 feet. It, well, somebody uses it, but they have access to use their own driveway. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that's your driveway access. Yes, sir. That 26 feet, portion of that 26 feet, whatever that width of the driveway is, there. So that's part of the reason why I think in addition to where your driveway is, you still need to still be looking for that buffer, and that's part of the Can reason. Can we put a privacy fence along that driveway? On the property line, have somebody come out and survey it. That's something that you, got, you know, the planning commission can certainly take into consideration. Typically, we don't. Um, but again, that's probably as much of a a, a temporary as is as a permanent issue. Trees are going to grow up. They're going to provide that, you know, height buffer not only adjacent properties but also back to Gordon Highway corridor. Um, and it's not just the west side, it's also that east side where there also is a driveway over there, uh, residential use. And that's, I certainly understand what you're saying. See, I think, you know. What you, we're doing makes very little noise. Now, she said we had complaints from our neighbors. My neighbors have not complained to me at all. They yeah. said they hadn't complained to nobody. Whether that's true or not, that, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just, you know, the way I'm looking at it, it would be a lot better with a privacy fence. If you build a privacy fence, you got plans to take it down? I mean, well, I could either leave it there and take it down. It don't really matter. I mean, for what little bit of noise we make in there, which ain't much or nothing. Right. I mean, to me, you right. know, I was just using common sense when I put the first fence up. But, I mean, I'm, hey, I'm not above tearing that fence down and putting another fence up. Right. I mean, I can take that one down, you know, just as good as I can put another one up. But I didn't, you know, I came to the county looking for a business license. They didn't come to me. So... You know, when, as soon as I came, everybody said, well, we know you've been doing that. Well, why didn't somebody come out there and stop me, you know, for 10 years, you know? Or at least ask. Wait a minute. But what, what I'm saying is I came to them looking to do the right thing, and I'm not asking no special favors, but, you know, what I've been able to read up on, I think the privacy fence. How high is a typical privacy fence? Eight feet? I can build it eight, six, ten, twelve, whatever you want to do. So, so I wouldn't. 
you know, I would like, if I'm going to do this, I would like to put it on the property line or either keep that off or like that. I mean, I, I have about 10 customers a week, make very little noise. So and it's not like you know, I'm running a Dollar General or Walmart there where there's people coming in and out every day. My name's John Hare. <clears throat> this goes to like the 10 customers a week. Does that mean that there still needs to be a bathroom in that building? Nobody's going to be in that building? I, I don't mind putting the septic tank down. I'll do whatever they tell me to. I'm just dealing with this property line. Well, I'm just letting you know this is my deal. Let me take care of it. I don't mind doing the bathroom. I don't mind building the office. That building there, that's not the office. She said it was going to be the office. That's not the office. That's just to store parts in. There won't be no customers going inside that building. If I need to build a brick and board middle, uh, brick building, I can do that. If I need to put the bathroom in, I can do that. What we'll be voting on is what was presented. Yes, sir. I understand. Yeah, well, I, I approached her a couple of days ago about the privacy thing. So I knew she had already put all this in. So I was just, you know, just I've been down here multiple times in the last month and a half trying to make sure I had all my ducks in a row yet. What I thought I knew what I was talking about. So. Pull back up the photo that shows the. 90% of this stuff goes to auctions. I, I haul there. it off myself. In relation to that fence that goes down the driveway there. Yes, sir. Where are we talking? Where would that landscape buffer go? That would go on the left side of that fence. He wants to go inside the fence. Challenge would be um, because the property line is reference to the picture right of that driveway. Property line is twenty some feet right there. No place to plant a buffer between the property line and that wooden fence that you see. And I thought, and I thought the same way. That's why I thought a privacy fence served a better purpose. I uh, wouldn't have to use the real estate to where I need to store my product at. All right, it was about four foot. About four, okay. You know, and I don't Just know. Just for reference purposes. Maybe y'all can explain to me what a buffer is. You know, I'm thinking something solid where you can't see or look through it or whatever. So it was 30 foot, you know, that's eating up all. That's all we passed that little uh, building there. That little building's 18 foot off that fence. So you're talking about going half the way side of that building, make a 30 foot. You now we can go out there and measure it. We can have somebody do the site plan, however you want to do it. I can move that building if you want me. That's not going to be the office anyway. Other questions? Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here that would like to speak opposed to this request? Is there a way to reduce the landscape buffer width as opposed to going to a privacy fence? Yes, you could modify the condition they're proposed to have a different width on it. And just for everybody's benefit, whatever the recommendation for or against or, you know, as presented uh, proposed conditions or modified proposed conditions, Board of Commissioners will have an opportunity accept or modify those that recommendation just so that everybody knows that regardless of whatever comes out tonight there will be another decision by the board of final one yes sir uh, in columbia county is there any kind of um home-based business when you're dealing with agriculture supplies not for sales like this no okay i was told yesterday to make sure i asked that question because it's supposed to be in the I guess your handbook or whatever. I mean, that if you've got a home-based business and you're dealing with agricultural supplies or equipment, it's supposed to fall in a different category. See, that's what I asked for was home-based business. They told me that I needed an S-1. I, don't even, I still don't know what S-1 means. But, um, you know, I want to do a home-based business because we do everything out of our house. This is the only office equipment I need. I don't need a desk or a chair. Do everything with our phone. Yes, sir. So they tell me bill office, I'll bill office. But, uh, mainly do auction? Yes, sir. Uh, what I don't care to auction, I deliver 95% of everything there on the yard. So I have very limited, I mean, very few people come. It's more of a benefit for the community than it is. 
They can come to my place and buy it for $100 less than they can down the road. That's what people like. Okay, so you do. Yep. So far, you know, we got our business license. Not our business license. We got a retail license. We haven't started using them yet because we want to get all this straight for our business license. I'm just trying to fix all this legally before I go. Wife's a lot younger than me. I'm sure I'm going to go first, and I'm just trying to get it set up for her. So, but uh, do you know, you guys know if there is a agricultural anything? Different with agricultural I mean, we, supplies. We do have it. agricultural uses in our code, but it's more the you know, raising of cattle or crops or things of that nature. It's, it's <coughs> not going to apply to the retail sales of the equipment. Like like what you said, that's not considered an agricultural use. Well, I, I believe what you're telling me, but are you 100 percent sure that's what, what it reads? I am. Okay. That's all for me. Thank you, sir. Get a motion. Commissioner, I make a motion to recommend approval of conditions of RZ 240301 rezoning of plus or minus four acre portion of property at 4080 Gordon Highway from RA to S1 for the sale of livestock equipment. A second. All in favor? Motion carries. Before we leave that, does that, so with, really didn't get an answer on the privacy thing. So, that, so does it have to, ask the commissioner, they could, he can. So, so the, the answer to that is, is that the, the privacy fence was not part of the original recommended conditions. That was what the motion in the second was for and the recommendation by the planning commission. So at this point, the privacy fence is not, um, a consideration for the Board of Commissioners now, they can certainly modify um, or make their own decision whether they want to keep the conditions as uh, recommended by the Planning Commission or they can certainly modify any or all of them. So um, Planning Commission did not uh, choose to put the privacy fence condition in there as opposed to the 30 but he can, he can But he can still have that um, conversation. That, that would be handled with the Board of Commissioners, so you would need to request to speak for him to be on your agenda to speak at the um, May 19th, the, uh, March 19th. March 19th? Right, uh, yeah. March 19th, uh, BOC meeting. It'll be right here at 6 o'clock. Yeah, you will. Um, we'll get you a form here, and then uh, we'll get we'll get you uh, that request. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Douglas. Variance. Yes, so this is an application for variance at uh, 403 Beverly Road. Uh, this shows the uh, property uh, near the intersection of Bel Air Road and Wheeler Road. Um, could I go back to that last slide? Sorry. Um, this application actually stems from the desire of the property owner to build out the open space that you see kind of to the Northwest uh, within the the parcel. Uh, again, it's a the area that isn't built out, but looks like there could be a building fit in there. They want to expand on their property. Um, they have to bring uh, it into compliance with code. Um, as it stands now, it could continue to operate just as it has been in a non-conforming status. So this expansion of their business is what sort of initiated this application. Uh, the reason that the property has uh, come into non-compliance is, uh, or uh, non-conformity, sorry, is uh, if you see here, the property to the southeast of this parcel was rezoned in 2019 to C3 heavy commercial, um, whilst adjacent C2 properties uh, only have three foot setbacks from one another and no buffer requirement. C3 and C2 properties have 20 foot setbacks and buffer requirements from each other. And so that 2019 zoning change for the adjacent parcel has impacted this, uh, this parcel now and is the subject of uh, this variance application. Uh, this shows a close-up area of the property. Again, this open space to the northwest is where they're proposing the new building, but the subject of the uh, application is the southeasternmost lot line uh, abutting uh, where you see some parking in a, a paved drive aisle um, that we'll zoom in on a little bit more here in a moment. Uh, this shows the existing site. 
Uh, this shows the future development map. It's within uh, Activity Center. It's the plat for the property um, that shows that the drive paved drive aisle uh, here on to the uh, plat right side, the drive aisle now, those parking spaces that are in the subject buffer area now have been in place for some time, given that they're recorded on the plat. Uh, this is the site plan. Again, as you can see, all site changes are proposed for the northwestern area of the lot, uh, as opposed to the uh, southeasternmost area where the buffer is now uh, required. Um, through their submission for uh, these plans, uh, the applicant, their plans were reviewed both by our plan review department, as well as uh, all of our reviewing departments, both that look at those submissions and also this variance application. And through both reviews, none of the county offices have uh, you know, found any issue with their request. Um, beyond that, the biggest issue, uh, as shown here, the blue uh, highlighted area is the proposed, roughly the proposed 20-foot buffer area. As you can see, if they installed the landscape buffer, they would be doing away with their paved drive aisle, which helps them access that parking there. Um, part of what we review variances for are uh, you know, denial of reasonable use of property. In this case, a drive aisle and parking could be considered reasonable use of that property. Additionally, again, uh, these two properties have existed adjacent to one another for many years now and since 2019 with the zoning change to the adjacent property without any issues. Uh, neither property has adversely impacted one another and when that 2019 rezoning went through, there was a companion variance to this exact same code and this exact same 20-foot buffer for the property to the uh, southeast and they received relief from that buffer requirement so that they could maintain a paved drive aisle there. Uh, again, that doesn't have as much uh, bearing on the decision for tonight's application as the fact that they have not adversely impacted their neighboring properties, and this is probably reasonable use of their property. And in light of those facts, uh, staff is recommending approval of their application. This is uh, the exact area that we've been talking about uh, that is subject to the buffer change. And again, staff is recommending approval of this application. Thank you. Mayor Don Kelly, applicant Alexandra Reynolds, would you like to come forward and speak on behalf of your request? I don't, oh, my name's Alexandra Reynolds, 1296 Broad Street. Um, I don't have anything to add. I think you presented it. Uh, but if you have any questions, I can answer them. Anybody opposed would like to come forward? Thank you. Recommendation. I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval for the PA 24 03 02 variance to the section 90 139 to waive the 20 foot structural buffer at 403 Beverly Road. Second. All in favor? Aries. Okay, Mr. Butler. Senator Sheriff's request for a rezoning to C1. We'll look at this one used for convenience for fuel pumps. We're probably located at 1535 Alvin Harlem Road. The applicant has requested to postpone this request because this was advertised. We're going to go through the public hearing and everything for it. We'll move on forward with it. So the location of the property, uh, again, north of I-20, basically opposite the uh, access to Alliance Drive, the, uh, Wide Oak Business Park. <laughs> And currently zoned RA, uh, he has probably to the north is zoned S1 for a church. And again, across the street is primarily M2, uh, which is all for Wide Oak Business Park. But to the south is for the northern portion of uh, Greenpoint. So here's an overview of the site. We got about two acres. This thing site itself and the plot of the property. So the overall concept plan, we'll be seeing a uh, variance uh, for that that kind of highlights the, some of the the lines on here that show different ones. Again, it shows a proposed uh, convenience store with, 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 with fuel pumps. Does include diesel on it as well. Um, again, we'll be um, looking to probably postpone this. From a use standpoint, uh, meets, it, it meets the uh, require, or meets the future land use map. Um, there is some issue or some question, we'll say, maybe not necessarily an issue, with the basically this area here. So one of the things that was brought up with it is that if someone is Leaving Alliance Drive, um, there's not a lot of space, or there, there's not, not, not enough uh, area to block off someone turning left, basically coming down and doing that if they wanted to. 
So that was brought up as being a, a concern uh, we were working with both GDOT and the applicant on kind of how to address that issue. Uh, that has not been decided yet. So again, it's one of those is probably good that it was postponed or is, is requested to be, 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 be postponed. Um, again, it's one that from a land use standpoint, uh, it makes some sense. Uh, again, there is that small issue with the traffic side of things it needs to be worked out. But again, applicant is requesting to postpone this request uh, to the March 21st Planning Commission meeting. That includes staff recommendation. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on behalf? Zoning? Unopposed. Your motion. Mr. Butler, I see in the comments uh, where the Sheriff's Department raises some concern with traffic safety at Lloyd Post. How typical is that of the Sheriff's Department? So on commercial applications, not real typical. Uh, we've gotten them, for instance, we've gotten on another, another uh, convenience store. Um, this is one, this is a couple years ago. Um, they were basically commenting that it actually needed to be open 24 hours because they've had so many calls to it. Uh, but again, it's not real common to have the sheriff contact us directly with saying, hey, I got concerns about this. Um, so again, that is un unusual uh, with um, commercial resettings. Recommendation postponed. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to postpone RZ 24 03 02 rezoning the property at 1535 Applin Harlem Road from RA to C1 with conditional use for gas pumps to March 21st Planning Commission meeting. Second. In favor. Finally, Will. Yeah, this is a request for variance section IS 14710B2I use provisions to decrease building separation from, from residential properties, property at 1535 Athlon Harlem Road. Again, we, we already know the location of it, including zoned RA, and your aerial view of the site, existing site, flat. So on the concept plan, um, a so a convenience store is part of the use provisions. You do have a requirement that anything that's basically a building has to be 100 feet from any property that's zoned residential. Uh, the applicant has very kindly put you know, a drawing that shows where that would be. Basically, this thing is unusable if you do have that requirement in place for, for the pro's use itself. Um, so they are requesting to reduce that down to the 50 feet that you see on both sides here. Um, that allows them to accommodate all of their structures needed. Um, so again, that's how they would be able to use it for the, for the, uh, for the use itself. Um, again, they're not asking to get rid of it. So it's one that you know, they're basically locking in this design is Pretty much what they're, they're going to have to do if it is, if it is re reduced down to 50 feet. Um, again, same issue as before. It's been requested to postpone it, uh, so we're recommending to postpone the variance as well. Is anyone in the audience in favor of this would like to come speak? The audience opposed to this request. Motion. Chairman, I make a motion to postpone VA 24-03-03 variance section 90-147 to reduce the building separation of residential properties for a proposed gas station at 1535 Applin Harlem Road to the March 21st Planning Commission. Second. All in favor? Chairman, I make a motion. Motion carried. All in favor? Uh, 